But now let's get to Armageddon. That's the end of chapter 16. Look at chapter 16, verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates. It dried up, prepared the way for the kings of the east. The three unclean spirits like frogs came out of the mouth of the dragon. These are three demons. Verse 14 says, they're the spirit of demons. Gather them to the battle of the great day. And verse 16, the place in Hebrew is called the hill of Megiddo, Armageddon. Basically, now this isn't the battle, but this is the beginning of it. This is what so much of the Old Testament talks about. This is what Zechariah 12 to 14 talk about. This is God's wrath, Israel's future, and the great battle of Armageddon. Why? Why does that happen? Because God stakes his name on Israel. Hosea 5.15, God calls Jerusalem my city. In, in Jeremiah 31, God says, these are my people. This is my land, Israel. They're mine, my chosen people. So during the tribulation, all the nations of the earth turn against the Jews, the people God calls them, my people, and against Jerusalem, the city God calls my city. And look what the Lord says in Zechariah 3. The Lord will go forth and fight against those nations when he fights on the day of the battle. Actually, if you keep reading Zechariah, it says all the nations of the earth gather. So there are so many of these passages. Did you know there's an Isaiah, I mean Psalm 83 passage? There is this Ezekiel 38 and 39 that many people talk about. Daniel 11 describes the Antichrist's final battle. And then there's where we are, Revelation 16. Well, let me give you a chart. Uh, By the way, our friend Titus in the back has spent all of his own personal time, and he's converted all six or 700 of these slides into Microsoft something, and he's getting them for you. And the first five are already somewhere, and the rest are I don't know where. But this is how we reconcile this. The 69 weeks of the 70 weeks of Daniel, that's what's on the left. There's the interval, that's the cross. The little flame yellow thing is the destruction of Jerusalem. The yellow line is the rapture of the church. The Magog invasion of Ezekiel 38 and 39 has two groups. Some people feel it's before the rapture. Some people feel it's Armageddon. Now I'll tell you in a minute why uh, it, it doesn't, really fully aligned with Armageddon. The rebuilding of the temple, you notice the question marks there, we don't know when Magog invasion is for sure. We don't know when the temple gets started rebuilt, but we do know at the middle of the tribulation, the abomination of desolation, and from that point on is what is called the great tribulation. We do know the battle of Armageddon, that's the red line, is is what precipitates the second coming. Okay, and then we have the millennium. Well, what does Psalm 83 talk about. It talks about Moab, the Hagarenes, Gebal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, Tyre, and Assyria, all attacking Jerusalem at once. Now wait a minute. Moab are the Palestinians and the central Jordanians geographically. Hagarenes are the Egyptians. You know, Hagar was the matriarch of, of the, that came from Egypt. Gebal describes northern Lebanon, which is where Hezbollah is. Ammon, that's where the Palestinians and the northern Jordanians are. Amalek, that's the Sinai Arabs. Philistia, that's Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Tyre, they actually have the the area of Tyre. That's Hezbollah. Assyria, those are the Syrians and the northern Iraqis. When have all those people ever attacked Israel at once? Well, first of all, the list on the left, they are not all at the same time historically. So already we're having a problem. So if it's a geographical When is the Psalm 83 war? That's very interesting. Now, where's the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war? I mean, God gives geographic locations for us to think about stuff. And if you you took a map and plotted, in fact, here is a map where you plot all those places. Uh, Magog is South Russia. Gomer Tagarma is Turkey, Syria. Iran is Persia. Libya is Libya. Ethiopia is Ethiopia. They all attack Israel which is very interesting. Now, this is not a Bible map. This is uh, from uh, Bloomberg or something. And I showed you this a couple days ago. They recently published this and said there's a new Middle East Cold War where you know, the US is with its allies or against Russia with its allies. And Russia's allies are the green and the US's allies 
which happen to also be Israel's allies, are the red. That's very interesting because that's very similar to Ezekiel 38 and 39. But what Daniel and Revelation 16 and 19 talk about is different. It's not just, you know, the, the coalition of the uh, Muslim nations or those old aggressor, you know, the old enemies of Israel. Do you know what Daniel 11 and Revelation 16 and 19 talk about? It talks about what Daniel 11 says is that the Antichrist is sitting with his tent with his back to Jerusalem and he's looking toward the west. In other words, his base is looking to the west and so there's armies coming from what we would call Western Europe. There's the armies coming from the north. There are the armies of the You can actually read it, the kings of the south and then the kings of the east. So this is far bigger than Ezekiel 38 and 39 or Psalm 83. And it's it's huge. The kings of the east, I mean, you know, China, uh, you know, whatever, the, the tigers they call them, you know, Korea, Japan, all of those nations coming across. The armies of the north, of course, Russia and all the former Soviet Union Um, you know, those nations. And then we have the armies of the West, of course, Western Europe and the Western world, and then the great African armies. In other words, Armageddon is much bigger than Ezekiel 38 and 39, much bigger than Psalm 83. It's the final war of everybody. And what God says is judgment crescendos. At the end of 16, God said it is done, and Satan, who was defeated at the cross, is in the final stretch, the ultimate mega quake rumbles. It's, it's called mega seismos in Greek. How do you like that? It sounds just like English. You know, seismic and mega, you know, like a mega meal. And so it's a big seismos earthquake, the biggest one of all. Jerusalem is split, and it says every island and mountain starts moving on earth. So this is a crustal convulsion, not just the tectonic plates around the ring of fire. All of them start moving. Every island is moved, every mountain. Why? God is initiating the preparation of the earth for the millennial renewal. See, God is always, I mean, he's got this plan and he's orchestrating it and he's using the judgments to start getting the earth ready for the millennium. And he renews and does a lot. But during this time, God rains down. Look what he rains down. Look at the end. Verse 21 of chapter 16. And great hail from heaven fell on men. When did that happen before? Ah, in Joshua's conquest of the land. How long did it take Joshua to conquer the land? Seven years. How long does the tribulation last? Seven years. There is such correspondence between all the Old Testament events, Moses and the gods of Egypt and Joshua and the conquest of the land and and the king of the north and all that stuff. But look what happened both with Joshua and here. Hailstones about the weight of a talent. How much is a talent? You look down in the notes of your study Bible, it's differing weights between 60 and 100 pounds. Can you imagine? They're talking about hypersonic weapons. You know, it's in the news all the time. America has hypersonic weapons. They've tested them. They work. They're just, we don't blow the horn all the time. And they're finally letting them out. One of our hypersonic weapons doesn't have an explosive warhead. It's a kinetic energy weapon that they just send this this warhead, I don't know, weighs 100 pounds, but they send it at at like 15,000 miles an hour. Did you know that 100 pounds at 15,000 miles an hour you don't need explosions. The, the kinetic energy, it's like a meteorite. You know how big a hole a little meteorite makes. That's what's going on with these hailstones. And so, I mean, it's devastating. And everything on earth, land, sea, and air starts to convulse. And basically, life without Jesus just brings total fear. The whole world is, is fearful. And what does that say to us? Uh, Why was the book of Revelation written? To scare us, to get a bomb shelter so we can survive the tribulation? No. What did it do to the early, that map I keep showing you of the early people of the first century church that got it? It encouraged them. You know what they thought of? Oh, uh, what it says in, in Romans 8, if God is for us, who can be against us? He will freely give us all things. How about verse 35? Who can separate us from the love of Christ? The tribulation? No. Present distresses? No. Coming persecutions? No. Famine, nakedness, peril, sword, nothing. That's why God gives humans a taste of hell. It shows what people are counting on. 